Hello, it's Queensland Storyteller Time. I'm Kim Dodsworth. Today's story, Daddy's Little Darling, is by Jonathan Elson, and it appeared in Short and Twisted 2007, published by Salapine Press. Crispian Pretty John heaved his massive frame from the black leather armchair and gazed indulgently at the tiny Pomeranian yapping insistently at his feet. Walkies for my darling little Mimi, he fluted. Her frenzied barking filled the penthouse as he reached for the scarlet dog lead hanging from the hall door. Mimi could not in all honesty be called a sweet-natured dog, but beauty is said to be in the eye of the beholder, and Crispy and Pretty John adored his pampered little companion. Her shrill barking echoed constantly through the corridors of Sandringham mansions, and his long-suffering neighbours prayed that the vicious little canine would one day be taken to that great kennel in the sky, sooner rather than later, if possible. What Mimi lacked in size and intelligence, she made up for in longevity. Year in, year out, she continued to terrorise local Potts Point residents, their children, their pets, delivery boys, and the forbearing postman. Her needle-like incisors nipped ankles and fingers, buried themselves in calves, and snapped at retreating backsides with vicious impartiality. No matter what size the protagonist, Mimi would launch herself at them with untiring and ferocious energy. The indifference with which her indulgent owner viewed the terrorism wreaked by his dreadful pet was, if anything, even harder to bear, and consequently Pretty John's circle of friends grew smaller every year. They made an extraordinary pair as they trundled from Potts Point to Rushcutters Bay on their daily constitutional. Mimi's lack of stature was compensated for by her owner's alarming bulk. Crispian Pretty John was huge. Rolls of flesh undulated over his collar, and his vast stomach had long since enveloped anything resembling a waist. He didn't so much walk as surge through Rushcutters Bay Park, with Mimi bounding along in his wake. Other dog owners and dogs considerably larger than the tiny Pomeranian drew back and took refuge among the trees. All that is except Evangeline Haddock and her faithful Gregory. Little Miss Haddock was an equally devoted dog lover, and the object of her affection was a magnificent Great Dane, enormous in size and good-natured. Superbly groomed and sleekly muscled, Gregory possessed a gentleness that made him a firm favourite with doting mothers and tiny children who frequented Rushcutters Bay Park and gathered around its little café. Pretty John was retired, but had once been the head of window design for a major city department store, a position he exploited with as much ruthlessness as his canine gallleiter now ruled Potts Point. His flamboyant Christmas windows became the talk of Sydney, and for years Pretty John reigned supreme throughout the retail world. However, the season of goodwill was not reflected in the annual toll of misery he inflicted on his long-suffering staff. He ranted, he bullied. He shredded the nerves of his design team, and when he finally retired to his Potts Point nest, it was said that the collective sigh of relief could be heard all the way to Melbourne. The thorn that rankled in Crispy and Pretty John's side was Miss Evangeline Haddock. She had been appointed head of window design in Sydney's other leading department store soon after Pretty John rose to the top of the designing tree. She was as sweet-tempered and encouraging to her staff as he was impatient and provoking. Adored by her design team, she snatched the public's attention and the yearly accolades for most successful Christmas window from the infuriated Pretty John. Families travelled from all over New South Wales to gaze at Evangeline Haddock's magical window displays. But eventually, and to the dismay of the store's senior management, she too decided to retire to an enchanting little flat in Elizabeth Bay. Set in the wide expanse of rolling green sward, the Rushcutters Bay Cozy Nook Cafe provided excellent coffee and tasty snacks for all the nannies, parents and toddlers who frequented it.
Unfortunately, the local council recently introduced a ban on dogs, and although Pretty John wheedled, raged and threatened the owner, Dennis Tompkin remained adamant. Consequently, Mimi and Pretty John were forced to forgo delicious coffee and buttered scones and subside on a distant park bench by the seawall. To add insult to injury, Miss Haddock and the gentle Gregory were so popular and well-behaved that the warm-hearted Tompkin began placing a chair just beyond the cafe forecourt, where dog and mistress could settle themselves happily. Over her daily pot of tea and a muffin, Miss Haddock would welcome the gambling toddlers and enchanted children who ventured to play with the ever-patient Gregory. He happily tolerated the tentative pats and tiny inquiring fingers and responded with patient, amber-eyed gravity. Today, however, the midsummer heat was intense, and Crispy and Pretty John decided that he was no longer prepared to forego the foaming cappuccinos and delicious slices of gâteau he felt he so richly deserved after his strenuous walk. Weeks of resentment came bubbling to the surface, and with them the galling realisation that Evangeline Haddock had been totally unaware of his distant presence. She used to dog me with her bloody displays, and now she displays herself with a bloody dog, he muttered to his tiny companion as they perched uncomfortably by the harbour wall. Well, what the eye doesn't see, he remarked to Mimi, and tucking the protesting animal inside his florid Hawaiian shirt, he waddled at surprising speed towards the cafe. Children were everywhere. Pretty John loathed small children almost as fervently as he loathed large dogs. And there, on her solitary chair, sat little Evangeline Haddock, surrounded by tiny tots, doting mothers and watchful nannies, with the ever-faithful Gregory presiding over all with an indulgent eye. Disdaining to even glance in her direction, Pretty John shows a vacant seat on the forecourt, lowered himself into it, and clicked his fingers at a passing waitress. "'Who's Daddy's little darling, then? Who's my beauty?' he whispered to the hidden Pomeranian as they awaited the arrival of tea. "'Who's going to have some lovely chocolate gâteau? Who's Daddy's little favourite?' A boot-button eye blinked malevolently, and Pretty John adjusted his shirt-front to give the animal more air as the waitress arrived with coffee and cake. Soon the irresistible scent of chocolate proved too much for the concealed animal. With surprising agility she squirmed upwards, and an inquisitive head appeared beneath Pretty John's rolling jowls. Eager to stifle any giveaway bark, he hurriedly proffered a fingerful of delicious cake to the tiny mouth. "'Who's a lucky little Mimi, then?' He murmured to the gobbling animal. "'Who wants another little piecey?' He raised another pudgy finger of chocolate towards Mimi's eager jaws. Suddenly, Mimi's beady little eyes fastened on Gregory, who was sunning himself. With an ear-piercing shriek of fury, she scrabbled out from her hiding place, scattering coffee, cake, and children. She launched herself at the Great Dane with a ferocious energy. Toddlers screamed, tables rocked, and chairs were overturned as Gregory rose to his magnificent height and patted the little dervish with a massive paw. Gregory, ignore that thing, said Evangeline Haddock in a firm and precise voice. Sit, Gregory, sit, she commanded, glancing at Pretty John, who had lumbered to his feet, attempting to catch the flailing leash. He plunged among the children and precariously wobbling tables. Pandemonium reigned until Mimi was swatted away by Miss Haddock. Gregory was persuaded to sit again. A courageous nanny attempted to stop the Pomeranian in full flight by trying to stamp on the red leash. "'Naughty, naughty little Mimi!' bleated the flustered Pretty John as he tried to catch the enraged animal that darted away and leapt among the chaos of overturned tables and chairs. "'Still seeking public attention with extravagant displays, I see, Mr. Pretty John?' Evangeline Haddock said with clarity. He affected not to hear her and floundered after the hysterical Mimi who was bounding on and off vacant chairs and snapping at adults and children alike. The heady combination of chocolate cake, coffee and unaccustomed exercise suddenly began to take its toll on Crispy and Pretty John. 
Mimi had disappeared from sight, and he decided to pause from his exertions. He subsided heavily on a convenient chair, and remarkably, amidst all the mayhem, a miraculous silence descended on the cafe garden. To everyone's relief, Mimi's high-pitched yapping abruptly ceased. Mimi, come to Daddy, darling. Where's my precious? Cooed crispy and pretty John. But answer came there none. From beneath his enormous posterior, a red leash twitched briefly and was still. And that was Daddy's Little Darling by Jonathan Elsom. I'll be back next week at the same time with yet another quality story to, hopefully, divert and regale you. Goodbye until then. I'm Kim Dodsworth.